Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on a Sunday with yet another rebuild. And this is probably my hardest rebuild to date because not only am I rebuilding a team that has completely fallen apart, I am rebuilding a team that is in the third tier of their domestic league system. It's going to be a very interesting one. We are heading over to Portugal to rebuild OS Belenezes. Now, this team actually have one of the weirdest stories that you can find out there. I actually did cover it in my 10 clubs to rebuild video, but this club effectively after the 2017-2018 season was split in two. One side of the club, basically, Belenezes sad. Uh, they kept all the stadium. They kept all the playing staff, but they were banned from using the club crest and stuff like that uh, and that other club Belenezes that we are rebuilding today OS Belenezes they are the team that has the original badge they were founded in the year 1919 uh, but they basically got bumped all the way down they were into the regional leagues of Lisbon um, they basically had to start again which is absolutely ridiculous they have managed to get one promotion since to where we are able to pick things up today so if we dive in and take a look at things right here right now you can see this is Belenezes, OS Belenezes. They have their own stadium now in Portugal, uh, obviously in Lisbon as well. They are actually a one-time winner of the Portuguese top flight if I open up their honours in 1946. So quite a long time ago, hopefully in this rebuild we can get them back to the top. This is going to be a 10-year rebuild everybody so please do go grab yourself a drink, get yourself comfortable because you're going to have to strap in because this is going to be a long one. Um, but yes, the uh, they have won the Portuguese league previously but if we go into their competitions you can now see we are in the third league, uh, the third division. Um, alongside some very interesting teams. Obviously, there's a lot of B teams knocking around. In the northern stage, you've got Braga's B team, for instance. Uh, they're up there. We've got uh, Sporting Lisbon's B team in our group, um, but we are in the south stage, um, which is going to be really difficult to get out of. I, I, I think a promotion in this first season is going to be really really difficult if we look at the season preview this is how we are expected to get on obviously i did mention they were in the regional leagues of portugal they did get promoted last season into this third tier uh, where we are going to try and power our way forward but we are 33 to 1 to get a promotion you know that back-to-back -back promotion which i think is going to be really really difficult um in terms of the tactic for today guys we are using gyr's black panther tactic now this tactic is a bit of a beast uh, and i've not actually used it in a rebuild for a while so it's good to get it uh, a little bit of screen time a very very good rebuild you can check out the link to it down in the description but I felt like a 4-3-3 was probably the best course of action for this particular rebuild. We kind of want something standard, something pretty solid uh, that will get the job done. I think the DLP in this one will be quite good. Um, so that is the GYR Black Panther tactic. Obviously, this is the current squad that the boys have got in real life. If we go into the club info, they've actually got good training facilities and good youth facilities, good junior coaching, good youth recruitment. So the club is actually relatively well placed to kind of climb back up the leagues. Uh, but I don't think we're going to happen uh, it's going to happen overnight um, and one of the major issues with this is if we look at the finances uh, we don't have a lot of cash it's not the worst i've ever seen but our transfer uh, our transfer budget is nil um, and our wage budget is just under ten and a half thousand pounds so in this first season i'm not going to make any changes we're just going to run into it with the team that we've got let's flash forward to the end of the season and see how we get it So guys, season one is done and dusted and it is actually a promotion on the cards for this team. We actually did go all the way to the championship playoff um, against Vitoria, the Setubal, uh, and we got the job done. Two goals to one in this final, despite going down to 10 men just after we took the lead. Uh, we took, uh, went a goal up thanks to Xavi, definitely not that Xavi, um, and then uh, uh, Romario Carvalho scored a second um, before giving away a late penalty but we got the job done we got ourselves promotion in this first season basically if i talk you through what has happened in the first stage we were pretty comprehensive i thought that was going to show up something nice there but it didn't um so we go into the promotion stage here you play an extra six games in this promotion stage and you need to top your group to go into the promotion playoff we actually played six in this one one three 
drew one uh, and lost two of our games actually we actually did qualify with a minus goal difference in this one with our 10 points but 10 points was enough to get ourselves into that playoff final to go up into the portuguese second tier if we go and take a look at some of the competitions as well the Portugal, uh, the portuguese cup we got knocked out in the second round of but i'm not expecting to go all the way in the cup especially from the third tier it'd be like a league one side going all the way to the fa cup final it's just not going to happen um in terms of things moving forward obviously going into next season um, our wage budget has increased massively Thirty-eight thousand um is a huge improvement and we've got a little bit of transfer budget as well but i'm probably going to just try and slide as much of that into the wage budget as we humanly possibly can this club did keep all of its fans so i'm hoping as we grow we kind of have those fans coming back into the stadium. I do really want to touch on this particular guy who came through our youth intake. His name is Justin Haller. Obviously, this club does have good youth facilities and youth intakes and stuff like that. And Portugal is well renowned for creating some of the best youth in the world of football manager. He looks already like he's going to be really, really good. I've already given him six appearances in the league um, and he will be going on to basically sit at the defensive midfield position as our deep line playmaker for as long as I can keep hold of him. He looks like a really, really good prospect. As I said, he's already come through our first intake and is basically going to go straight into our starting 11. A starting 11, which I am probably going to gut a lot of for season number two. So let's get into it. So we're ready to go into the transfer update for season number two. And I have been a very, very busy boy. We have actually brought in 18 new players yes i've brought in 18 new players uh, to kind of try and alter this team and as you can see if we go onto the release players tab there's a lot of them gone as well they were on one year contracts i'm sorry to the boys they did the job that was required to get us promoted we have a brand new squad to go into the second season of this rebuild um and i will say i did touch on justin haller beforehand he is going to be pinned in this particular instance he is just going to sit here and basically be our defensive midfielder i've got him training on his passing to get him a little bit better as that dlp um, but i think this guy is going to be an absolute beast for us or we're going to sell him for a absolute stack of cash we've got lots of players in here i'm not going to touch on them too too much obviously um let's have a look at some of the better ones let's go on to the all transfers um but we've got we've got we've got loads i can't remember who is the best ones to be perfectly honest nuno campos is actually quite a good pickup um he's one of the good one of the better ones uh in the team but if we go into the tactic actually let's just quick pick without restriction our best 11 so you can kind of see the names that are in here right now marcelo alves obviously he comes in as a four star player uh, we've got three and a half star player here in levi uh, he looks quite good uh, benny is another guy who's coming in 21 year old looks looks quite decent to go into, into central midfield i think we've got a nice little balanced team despite the fact that our team cohesion is probably going to be in the bin it is very poor because none of these players know each other they don't know the system just yet we've been through pre-season it's been quite patchy to be honest and we've played one game in the allianz cup second phase uh, but we are ready to get into the portuguese second tier a bit more of a traditional division this one two down one in the playoff uh, and then three go up we are now finally in the same division as the b sad that basically the other half of the club from when it split so this is going to be a very interesting one to see what actually does happen uh when we come up against them because if we go into the club vision and we take a look at the supporters they really want us to uh be competitive against this team so we need to get things done here um basically in terms of the competition so if we go over to the portuguese second tier and take a look at the season preview uh we are 16th predicted to finish in 16th we are 100 to 1 to get ourselves promoted obviously there is a team in here that cannot get themselves promoted that is porto's b team uh, but there is some good teams in here as well you will start recognizing some of the names that we are coming up against in this save very very soon if you're not uh, a portuguese football aficionado um if we go over to the competitions obviously we've got another competition this year the allianz cup i'm not expecting us to do very well in this obviously one team goes through out of this group stage i'd imagine in this particular instance it's going to be braga let's get forward to the end of the season and see how we get on in the portuguese second tier So guys, it actually turns out if you get a brand new team, sometimes 
magic can happen we have been promoted it's gone back to back to back obviously the one that happened in real life followed up by the two from myself i think we were kind of lucky here with the fact that porto's b team did finish in second which kind of does help us out as you can see there is a gap because porto's b team obviously can't get promoted to play in the same division as porto all of this stuff really does help um so obviously there is a, a special spot for someone like ourselves that we can really take advantage of yes okay we beat them by points but even if that wasn't the case uh, even if we did finish just below them we would have been promoted as champions regardless so we've done really well here only a plus 19 in terms of that goal difference we did win 20 of our games this season obviously the new goal scorer uh, pedro sores doing really really well here in terms of a pr improvement on the team he looks quite nice I, I i'm really happy with him 13 goals in 17 starts and 13 sub appearances pretty pretty good for someone at this level obviously not a huge reputation of a player obviously not a huge reputation of a club to bring people in either um in the portuguese cup we got to the fourth round which is actually quite a, a nice improvement there and we were knocked out in the third phase of the allianz cup as well uh, which was ultimately won by porto um so in terms of everything guys we actually got ourselves promoted which i wasn't really wasn't expecting but this brand new team really did start to gel together really really nicely if we go onto the home tab you can see david calderon was our top goal scorer in all competitions he started a few more um and did really really well but he doesn't like big matches and he isn't very brave so uh, again this team isn't the final product please do give me time we are trying to get the job done as quickly as possible we finished top b sad finished in 13th so unlucky to them in terms of the club vision and stuff guys we're at an a plus obviously we got back to back promotions they're going to be really really happy with stuff and in terms of the finances um next season is going to be a bit of a struggle we have no transfer budget but my wage budget has doubled so we're going to wheel and deal as many freebies as humanly possible maybe my wonder kid finder will start to come out um and we'll kind of see how we get on but if we have a look at our man haller here he is turning into a very very good player he's currently valued at 900 to 1.4 900k to 1.4 million Let's see what he gets to in another couple of seasons having played an entire full season for us let's get into season number three right now right transfer update for season number three this is a little bit reduced compared to last season we've only brought in four names this year we've actually turned a little bit of a profit pedro marquez goes out uh, for just under 20k he goes out to another uh another club uh um in lisbon oriental lisboa uh, he's gone there and then we brought in four players uh, this guy frank bagnac he comes in as a c uh, center back option again looks pretty good six foot two uh, he's 29 years of age and is definitely an improvement for us in that particular position we've also brought in z wilson he looks very good as well another ball winning midfielder another central midfielder who can kind of play in two of these positions occupying key areas for me um, a little bit of a brute he's played a lot of uh, games in his career already 131 in league uh, action um, and is a decent player for the standard likes his big matches is consistent as well we've brought in eric as well uh, he again looks quite nice another center back this is kind of the area that we needed to improve guys we conceded a lot of goals our goal difference wasn't fantastic for a team that got promoted last year so this is where we really needed to spend some cash this guy's been capped by ecuador he's 25 years of age i think again is another nice improvement then we've also got tobias zarate here he's going to be our new leading man up top i wasn't overly happy with both of the strikers that we did have we've got a new one he is a argentine 24 years of age um hoping he can do some damage for us in competitions moving forward speaking of competitions obviously we are now into the portuguese top flight the main goal of this season is season number three do not get relegated the board expectation is to finish in the relegation playoff uh which would be in 16th here we want to do slightly better than that but i will take 15th we are a thousand to one to win the division obviously we are nowhere near the likes of porto benfica sporting braga all of these bigger portuguese teams were nowhere near it we're a thousand to one if we can finish in 15th i think that is a phenomenal phenomenal season um obviously we do have the other cup competitions as well but i think ultimately we are doing quite well here again our main man justin haller is going to be the big dog in the central defensive midfield spot he is going to play every minute of every game that we humanly possibly can play so let's flash forward to the end of the season and see if we can get away from that relegation battle I said to you that I would be happy with 15th. 
We finished 14th. I'm actually really, I'm actually really, really happy with the fact that we avoided the promotion relegation playoff fiasco. We obviously avoided the immediate relegation, which is fantastic. And we finished in 14th. Yeah, okay. We lost 20 games this season. Yeah, okay. We've got a minus 23 goal difference, but we're going to start to gradually build something here. Part of our issue this time around was the fact that we obviously did ship an awful lot of goals. If I expand the league table for you, you can now see uh, we only scored 35 goals goals all season we did concede 58 part of our issue is honestly not scoring enough there are teams just above us that have scored like 50 goals as you can kind of see up here 50 55 goals that's kind of where i'm going to be targeting for next season even if we do ship another 50 against us i just want us to be a little bit better and a little bit more clinical in front of goal but we do survive in portugal obviously we're nowhere near the top of the league yet um you know benfica almost got treble our points uh, which you know is kind of to be expected we're knocked out in the fifth round of the portuguese cup by porto and then in the allianz cup we were knocked out in the second phase um as you can see in the league lots of different goal scorers nobody really staking their claim our top goal scorers, though, were Omar Sao, who came in last season. He's doing all right. And then Tobias Zarate, who we did buy, he was another top goal scorer for us. But he only got seven throughout the course of the season. So it's going to be very interesting to see how we move forward. Justin Haller, again, improving. I'm just going to keep touching in on him. He is improving quite nicely in his abilities. Um, 20 aggression, though, a slight problem. He did pick up 11, no, sorry, 12 yellow cards throughout the course of the season. Going into season number four, we do have a little bit of cash to spend. That wage budget is increasing quite nicely. We slide things over we've got uh, just under eighty-four thousand pounds to spend we are in the red which is sub ideal but i'm thinking by being in the portuguese top flight we will be doing okay if we actually take a look at things here on the team detailed i just want to show you the golf in salary um obviously we are the 13th best uh in terms of salary uh, but if you look at our salary which is 3.36 million then you look at benfica's which is just over 59 million again this is quite a vast difference this is like being a smaller team in in France with PSG at this particular stage there's still a lot of work to go and we are going to do that for season number four and that transfer update coming up right now so guys we are back for another transfer update this is season four right now and yet again i've not spent a penny i am trying to be as frugal as possible we'll send a couple players out for as much as money as much money as we possibly can david calderon he has gone uh one of the backup strikers that we did have last season he has gone and we brought in all of these boys here uh, christian totti is the player that i do want to touch upon the most uh, he looks really really good he's consistent he's good at finishing uh he is i assume no relation to francisco totti i have no idea if he is let me know down in the comments section 19 years of age he is a former roma player though so maybe maybe he is a, maybe he is totti's son i don't actually know uh 19 years of age six foot one knows where the goal is 15 finishing uh good composure as well as concentration is a bit poor but i'm sure that's something that we can work on with him getting some game time because He's never played for Roma, ever. So uh, he's a he's an interesting addition. We also brought in Bruno again, another winger, and play in two of the key positions for us in this team. He looks quite nice. Ibrahim, he looks really good as well. Really exciting prospect again another winger we're trying to score more goals this year guys i don't know if you could tell brought in a new goalkeeper as well though cleeton he comes in uh looks a vast improvement on what we did have in net with leo last season omar comes in as well a fullback on that left hand side he looks quite tasty and dennis apaya a fullback on the right hand side you can see these key areas that we are trying to improve each time again justin haller will be pinned into this for every single game that he is available for but this is the team going into this season again we've not really addressed that striker issue i think we're going to be playing uh, Totti in there as that solo striker. But hopefully he's getting a little bit more support from the boys around him. I need to introduce you guys to Jose Baptista. He looks really good as well. Another five-star prospect that has come through our youth academy. Uh, not as good as Halo right off the rip. But played 10 times for us last season um, in the Portuguese league. Most of those coming as a substitute appearance. Uh, he looks like he is ready to be in contention for first-team football. He's valued at 20 to 31 million. That is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And Haller is 13.5 to 15.5. So we've got some really good youth prospects that we probably, unfortunately, are going to have to cash in at some stage. Um, talking about the competitions, though, 
Again, we're in the same three competitions. You're going to see these same three names mentioned the whole way so far. We've already been knocked out of the Allianz Cup, to be perfectly honest uh, with you. Uh, it's not been great. We got knocked out straight away. But the main focus is the Portuguese league now if we take a look at the season preview we are still a thousand to one they are not backing us they don't think we've improved at all i think we've improved i think our team is definitely better this year and i'm hoping we scoop a lot of goals or comparatively to last season let's simulate the season and see if we can stay in the division for yet another year i think we did a bit better than stay in the division we finished in sixth Guys, I, I don't know what's happened, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, this Black Panther tactic is very good. There's a reason we've tested it. There's a reason we, uh, we're we using it. But we've absolutely smashed it. Obviously, we're still like almost 30 points behind Porto, who won the league. Actually, it is exactly 30 points behind Porto, who won the league. Uh, we're not taking the third round of the Portuguese Cup uh, in the third round, which is sub-ideal. Uh, but ultimately, it's all about this league performance. Big Bruno did really, really well for us. He got 17 goals and six assists for us. Again, looking fantastic. And Christian Totti, the man who we did talk about, he had a very good year as well. Uh, 18 goals in all competitions along with three assists. His concentration not improved a jot. Um, but ultimately, finishing in sixth, is absolutely huge for a club the size of Belenezes, obviously with the back-to-back -back promotions and stuff like that. Surviving last year and then really, really going for it this year. Obviously, we did touch upon the amount of goals that we wanted to score if I expand the stages so that we can see. You can see 51 goals. I was aiming for 50. We got 51. We did concede an awful lot as well, 47. That definitely is going to be an area that we need to tighten up. But ultimately, positive goal difference, flying up the league. We're in sixth at the moment. Could next season be a year that we finally snatch a European place? Transfer update. The season five of this 10-year rebuild coming up now. So guys, before we get into season number five, if you are enjoying the rebuilds, I've seen you guys asking for a 10-year rebuild, and here you have the first one that we've done in a long, long while. If you are enjoying the rebuild, please do drop a like on today's video. It really does help me out, helps the YouTube algorithm for the channel, shows this video is liked by the people that are watching it. And as I said, you guys asked for the 10-year rebuild, so here is one. Let's talk about transfers, though, for season number five. I've done none. I don't think I needed to do any. Obviously, we did really, really well. The finances were kind of okay. Our transfer budget increased a little bit, but I didn't think we needed anybody. Genuinely, I think this team is good enough. Justin Haller is now a four-star ability player he is really really rounded into himself now he looks like a fantastic prospect obviously we have been working on his passing in his individual training focus because his passing for a dlp was quite poor now he's got 12 passing along with that 18 technique again very very good player because of this we've basically grown into ourselves this year and this is the team again as i said i'm not really touching it at all we kind of need a little bit of a better right back obviously working as an inverted wing back isn't probably the best position for trying to find uh, some of these sorts of players uh, but yeah Haller looking fantastic 14 point 14 to 16 point uh, 5 million and then uh, Baptista as well 19 to 28 million again this guy is probably going to be the first one that is going to be shipped out of the door but the team is looking really good and I'm actually feeling confident that we can kind of break into one of those European spots so if we go and take a look at the competitions obviously we did have a friendly cup doesn't matter uh, but we do have the other three competitions the board expectation despite finishing in sixth last season is to avoid relegation um there's not really been a lot of ambition shown to be perfectly honest if we take a look at the season preview though we have improved despite not signing anybody we as a team have improved we are now 600 to one to win the division and predicted to finish in 16th which is actually still in that promotion relegation playoff battle I think we can do much better than that. I really, really do. If we go and take a look at things as well, I think we're ready to really make a run at those European spots. I'll see you at the end of season number five. So we have improved yet again. We've climbed yet one more place in the league. And we finish in fifth, which means we will be playing European football with this team we've gone in five seasons from the third tier of portugal to now representing the country in a continental competition i think this is huge progress and i think we've done phenomenally well our main issue though 
We just draw so many bloody matches. It's really, really irritating. If we take a look at the league, and let's just expand this fully so that we can see it, everything. Uh, Porto uh, don't lose, uh, don't win the title this year. It's Ben Fiku win the title. Porto come in second and they scoop their Champions League places. It says that we qualify for the Europa Conference League, uh, which is going to be really interesting to see how we get on in that. But 15 wins for us this season, but the issue is the 12 draws we didn't improve as much as i thought we were going to we tightened up a little bit we conceded five less goals than last season but scored one less that is definitely going to be an issue that we're going to have to address next season because there are teams below us that kind of did better braga for instance had a better goal difference um it, again it's something that we need to take a look at because if we look at the four teams above us absolutely dwarf us in terms of that goal difference so that is going to be something that we are really really going to have to work on but considering we didn't actually sign anybody for this season i think we're in really really good shape if we take a look at some of the other competitions so guys we finished in the sixth round we are knocked out in the sixth round by baraga in the portuguese cup and knocked out in that third phase of the allianz cup um, if we go onto the home screen, you can kind of see Bruno was our top goal scorer. Again, we are really trying to improve some of this quality here. Former Boa Vista player, former Benfica player, despite never playing for Benfica. Looks like a nice little prospect. Was capped at under 18 level by Portugal, but... Uh, yeah, he was our top goal scorer in all competitions. Uh, 20 goals for him and 11 assists. Again, doing very, very good things on the flanks. If we go and take a look at the tactic and the squad, just a second, uh, because Justin Haller is currently wanted by Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Real Sociedad. I have a feeling this is going to be the departure of our star man coming through our youth intake but we will see i've got just under 600k to spend on players as well our wage budgets increased massively because we are going into a european competition if i slide it all into the wage budget i'm gonna have about 50 to 60k to spend on player wages to improve this team hopefully we can wine and uh, wine and dine wheel and deal with a few more freebies <sighs> guys it happened the season six transfer update is here and justin haller is gone as you can see he is gone to real sociedad now he looks very good and i actually thought one of the bigger boys was going to come in for him but ultimately he wanted to leave he wanted to pursue uh, being in a squad with a, a better ability and he's gone over to Spain to do so now He's at Real Sociedad if we take a look at his career history Obviously he came through our youth intake and came straight into the first team last season was his best year in terms of average rating 7.01 but the La Liga club purchased him for 7.75 million. This is actually quite a huge addition to the club. Um, we're overspending on our wage budget, but I basically slid all my transfer budget then into the wage budget just to get the best possible players into this squad. Uh, let's talk about some of them though. Uh, Militieri, he comes in as our new striker. I think he's got the ability to be a phenomenal striker at this uh, level. We've replaced an Italian striker with an Italian striker. And I'm hoping he can kind of fire us to a little bit of glory. Ibos, Iboze is how I'm going to say this dude's name. Uh, natural at centre back, natural at left back. Um, he's unhappy at the sale of our star player, but. You know, guys, money's money, isn't it? Uh, at the end of the day, if a player wants to leave, a player wants to leave. You know what I mean? Uh, Casade is gone. Uh, is has arrived at the club. Obviously, a Chelsea youth prospect. Uh, he's here to play in central midfield. You can kind of see what we're doing here, guys. We're buying young, and trying to sell them on for a profit. Uh, Z Carlos is here, another fullback option for us in that right back spot. A Fola, Bernardo Fola. He comes in as a central midfielder, obviously former Porto player. I uh, played a lot for Porto B, not a lot for the Portuguese uh, Porto first team. Uh, Miguel Vieira is here as well. Um, Vilela, I, I butcher some of these names, so I apologize any Portuguese viewers that we do have. Uh, he comes in as another squad option for that left back spot. Jose Muller comes in. He comes in uh, to be another sort of centre back for us, a former Benfica player. Again, another one who's not come through and played for their first team. Edgar Hernandez, we're starting to pick up some of these new gens now, guys. Um, I'm trying to be as, as frugal as I possibly can. He comes in to play in that defensive midfield role. He is basically coming in to be our Justin Haller replacement in a certain instance. Lucas Estafias, he comes in as well. Another left-back option. He's the starting choice left-back for us this year. 
of Goncalo Borges. He comes in, another winger. Looks looks actually really good. 16 pace, 16 dribble, and I'm hoping he can be quite tricky for us. And then the last man, Adrian De La Fuente. He comes in. He is our main centre-back. Yes, okay, he's a bit more on the older side than some of these others, but I have said you don't win anything with kids. So we've got a nice little squad, uh, but we did have a hole in that DLP spot. If we do quick pick without restriction, our best 11. This is how we're looking going into this particular season. We've got Baptista still at the club. He is transfer listed, though, uh, because he does want to leave. Um, and he does have some teams interested in him. If we hover over this one, we've got Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester United, Rio Ave, and uh, uh, Vizela, uh, the bottom two in Portugal, want him on loan. I would rather sell him to one of these big boys. His value is 12 million right now. Uh, if we can cap uh, capitalize on this Cape Verde International, uh, again, an an another one who's come to our youth intake, it is going to be the time to do it. We're a bit ropey at the back. I'd like another centre back. If I can sell Baptiste and get a little bit more money, we will be in a good spot. We are into a European competition, though. We are into the Europa Conference League. In my opinion, the one that is branded the best. I like the green on the black. I think it works really well. Uh, but we do have to qualify for that. We have to go through a qualifying path to get there. In terms of the Portuguese League, if we have a look at the season preview, we are really starting to climb up these predictions. Now, we are predicted to finish in 11th, uh, despite being in the Europa Conference League. We are now 200 to 1 to win the division. Porto are the favourites still. Um, I've not really been keeping an eye on some of these top teams to see if they've been gutted yet, but it looks like from some of the players that are available here, a lot of them have been. Antonio Silva gone by the looks of things Diogo Costa the goalkeeper gone as well by the looks of things so we are going to simulate this season to see if we can progress just a little bit more and also our first season in a European competition hey guys I don't understand what's happened with this season I genuinely don't we've won the Europa Conference League but we were awful in the league we dropped down all the way to 10th in the league probably because of the cup run to be perfectly honest but we won the Europa Conference League we beat St Gallen in that final um I don't know what's happened here uh, Marcelo Alves and Militeri with the two with the goals we kind of run out comfortable winners in the end I don't really understand genuinely I don't understand we get the job done we get the trophy lifted which means we'll be playing in the Europa League next year. We're following in the footsteps of Newcastle, who won this trophy before. Tottenham have won it as well. Roma, obviously, the first winners of this trophy. But we were bad in the league, man. We were bad in <laughs> we were bad in the league. We finished in tenth. We finished in tenth, as you can see. Twelve uh, victories, six draws. Uh, 16 defeats we just conceded a boatload of goals we conceded 11 goals against porto into uh into league fixtures porto did go on to win the league we are into the europa league i don't really know what's going on i don't understand why we can be good in a cup competition but bad elsewhere we've got a lot of money in the bank now obviously being in european competition and going all the way to finals really really does help that bank balance uh 14.3 million in the overall balance we've got 3.8 million transfer budget but you know what i'm gonna do guys we're still not gonna spend it on anybody we're gonna move it all into the wage budget which is almost double our existing wage budget to improve this squad now i will go and take a look at the transfer history because i do have an update to tell you before we go and spend a lot of this cash jose baptista he has gone he is playing at el nasa he's actually gone over to try and pretend to be cristiano ronaldo um another portuguese slasher or cape verde in this instance player going to el nasa he's gone over there he pay uh, they paid 50 million for him to go and play in saudi arabia uh, that was predominantly in and around that deadline day period um, but another 50 million coming into the club coffers from a player through our youth intake guys so again very very impressive there we've got a lot of cash to spend in terms of that wage budget let's go and spend it for season number seven okay transfer update for season number seven and i did do exactly what i thought i was going to do i slid it all into the wage budget and we've been able to rejuvenate this team hopefully to bounce back from that poor finish in the league last season we've signed a lot of players here guys and i'm hoping they all kind of fit in as well we've got martin garay he comes in very very nice player to go in this right back spot he was released by braga um from last season he actually played 24 times for braga in the league last year so actually 
actually experience in the division a real real nice bonus normando comes in a young player again actually from b sad which is very interesting uh he then went to braga in his career now he's actually at the good team Oh, it was just the loan, was it? Okay, never mind. I won't give him as much hate then. Uh, obviously, coming through that Braga youth system. Parfait comes in. If you actually watch me live on Twitch, uh, I actually have this guy at Versailles. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Hood Gaming UK. Come and check out the save with Versailles. I have him there. I've got him again here. He's actually a Benfica player. We've managed to scoop him. He played for Benfica B all last season. Now he's going to play for us. Uh, Valhus is another player who comes in and then the central, a central defender. We've been out and spent some good money here, guys. Uh, and as I said, the, the players are starting to tell that we are a little bit better and hopefully we can push on into the latter stages, maybe of the Europa League. I don't know. Maybe we can climb up the division. I just don't know just yet. Uh, Stefan comes in. Uh, again, looks really, really good, this player. Um, a uh, really high passing high tackling good sense back with good positioning again really really nice to come across he is five foot ten though which is potentially a little bit short another player comes in backup goalkeeper again you always need to have your two goalkeepers guys this is my starting goalkeeper now luca ashby hammond uh, former Wrexham goalkeeper so you can kind of see the level that I'm sort of at now uh, former Stockport Aldershot Fulham you can see the level that he's been at uh, he is now going to be my starting choice goalkeeper for this season coming up We've also signed Donate to play as the right back. I don't know what, what it is, but I'm signing an awful lot of Italians here. Romero, he comes in to be our central midfielder. Again, looking like a fantastic young player. 25 years of age. 5'7", though, again. We are kind of maybe a tiny team. Or maybe I've put together a tiny team that I didn't really know. Uh, Lucas comes in. He is going to play on the wing. A former Nice player. Again, you can kind of see the sort of players that I'm looking for, guys. Then we brought in a veteran. Andre Almeida. Former Valencia man, again, another player who knows the division, 28 years of age, has played a lot in uh, Portugal previously, played a couple seasons there before going over to Spain to Valencia, 6.5 million he transferred for, we get him free. Uh, again, so we are wheeling and dealing, no additional other major outgoings to talk to you about, uh, so let's have a look quickly at our team we quick pick our best 11 this is how we're looking no huge improvements in a lot of areas ashby hammond comes in z carlos uh you can see Ebose is still there romero comes in as that defensive midfielder now parfait and almeida are going to be the two in that midfield and hopefully this goal scoring a trio up top actually does hit the back of the net a lot of the time if we go into the competitions obviously as winners of the europa conference league <sighs> we're into the europa league um, so this is going to be a really interesting one to see. We're at a later stage of the Allianz Cup now. We're, we're kind of progressing really nicely as a club on and off the field. If we take a look at the league, the board expectation for us is to actually finish mid-season. I kind of want to break into this. Basically, Porto and Benfica just alternating which who wins which year. So Porto won it last year. It'll be interesting to see if Benfica do win it this year. If we take a look at that season preview, though, we're up to 50 to one now we are definitely making some progress here 50 to one to win the division we are predicted to finish in eight that is that mid table or top half finish that the board are looking for i want to get back into these european competition places via the league not just by winning stuff i don't think we're going to win the europa league we enter in the league phase obviously the the european format does change we're going to be in that league phase so hopefully we don't embarrass ourselves in the europa Okay, so season seven eight is in the books, and again, we've kind of improved, and I'm really, really happy with how things have gone. Obviously, the coefficient changes at the end of this season. We've got a lot more places available to us, which I'm really, really happy with. Benfica win the league, Porto come in second. We actually finish in sixth, which means because of the league format now, we actually, and, and the coefficient and stuff like that, and the actual number of, sheer number of places available, we actually qualify in sixth for the Europa League. We actually continue uh, our our upward trajectory of being involved in a European competition yet again. Uh, we've actually done really, really well here. I'm really happy with the team. Uh, we're back into the positive goal difference, but 54 points. I don't actually remember if this is the best points total that we've got. 54, 57. 57 is our top point scored. So that is going to be the goal for next season to score more uh, points on the board than that. 
Um, again, the gap between ourselves and Benfica at the top is just under 30 points. It doesn't feel like we've got much better in that particular instance. We actually got to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Um, uh, RB Salzburg go all the way on to win that. Leipzig win it one year. Salzburg win it the year after. Uh, RB domination. We lost to Sassuolo 7-4 on aggregate in that um, in that tie despite winning our game at home. Uh, the team from Italy a little bit too good for us on this occasion but at least we were in good company there and not taking the fourth round of the portuguese cup again by porto not taking the third phase of the Allianz cup um so we've actually done quite well here if we go onto the home screen you can see uh Militari actually scoring a lot of goals for us 18 goals scored for him four assists for the italian um all in all again a very impressive uh season for us so if we go into the finances by being in european competitions it allows you to just grow so, so much. We've got 4.6 million now, uh, an extra 25K in that wage budget. If I actually just slide that all the way across, we can see that we will be able to improve our wage budget by around 115K a week. I don't think I'm gonna start spending any money just yet on big players. Um, I think in this instance, we're just gonna keep relying on the free transfers like we have been. Let's go season number eight. Right guys, transfer update for season number eight, and I think I've done fantastically well in this window. I've been wheeling, wheeling and dealing again, and we've not spent a penny going into this season, but I feel like we've really, really improved with these five players I'm going to talk about now. Matteo Soroni, he comes in to be our defensive midfielder. We've not really had a great DM since we had Haller back in the day. I will talk about him towards the end of the video. I'll show you how he got on as our well, same as uh, Baptista. Uh, but he is our new defensive midfielder, 25 years of age, Argentinian. He's been capped twice by, uh, by Argentina. Uh, former uh, Inter Milan player. He's just not really had a lot of playing time over in Italy. Uh, looks like he's been picked up from Velas. Yes, a, a player that I do recognize. We've also signed this guy, Danilo uh, Buric is how I'm going to say this dude's name. He is a Serbian. Uh, he has come out of one of the teams in Serbia. A new gen, of course, as you can tell by this face. Um, inside forward on that left hand side I think he's going to be a real real star for us moving forward I think he's got high potential uh, has a lot of stuff that he needs to work on but his physicals are really really nice I think he could be a good player for us moving forward uh, Daniel Perez another player comes in uh, from Club Bruges, uh, Venezuelan, uh, again, another player that we've paid absolutely nothing for. A lot of these players just aren't getting the game time at their clubs. He is a striker for us, another option. Uh, he is just a squad player. So again, any any of these players that we pick up on free transfers, again, even if we sell them on a year later, I think is good money and good value for business. Uh, then we've got Christian Roberts here, an Australian international. Uh, five caps for Australia, comes out of the Central Coast Mariners. Uh, again, available on a free transfer so i feel a good pickup yet again 18 first touch is actually really really good good decision making good determination good flair good vision good technique i think he can have the ability to unlock defenses quite nicely and then this is the big transfer that i'm really really happy with obviously a former psg man we have l shadow uh bit is uh bit bit I'm, I'm going to butcher this guy's name and I apologize for it, but he's six foot five and he's got 17 jumping reach with 15 head in. That's why he's in the team. He looks like an absolute monster. No real surprise that he's not played a lot at PSG. He was actually loaned over to the Portuguese league last season, played 32 times. I think he's real ready to make that step up. Now he's 24 years of age. If we go and take a look at the best 11 super quickly, uh, this is how we are looking. Uh, I don't know why Rodriguez is coming in there. Uh, we need to fill in some bodies, it would appear. But this is the team as things stand. We need a right back. We need a central midfielder. Um, but the team is looking quite nice, quite tasty. We've got a couple of good new gens in there. Happy with how things are going. Again, we've got the same four competitions. We're back in that Europa League, this time qualifying via the league, uh, which is uh, fantastic to see. And then we have the other domestic cups in Portugal. The board want a top half finish in the Portuguese league. And if we go into the season preview, we're back out to 100 to 1. So they actually feel that we've got worse or some of the other teams have got better. Looking at this team, it is a majority of Benfica players. And this guy is a absolute monster. Nelson Wiper. Um, I've done a video on him. He's, he's, he's just incredible, isn't he? Six foot four. Yeah beast um anyway we're going to simulate season number eight and hopefully we can improve and keep 
keep, just keep plugging away, making this club an absolute mainstay for the top third of the Portuguese. League. Again, improvements on improvements on improvements. It's all I can ask for out of this team. We finished in fifth in the league again this is our highest points total 61 points for us now um that goal difference differential is starting to creep up we're getting more and more into that positive section and you'll never guess what guys the league has changed hands again porto this time have won the league they've got gabriel barbosa as i said porto and benfica just alternating each year i would love to disrupt that and i would love to win a league title with belenezes in this video but we will have to see if that happens but it didn't happen this year and we've only got two more years to see if we can make it happen 18 plus 18 in terms of that goal difference nine losses throughout the course of the season seven draws 18 wins 18 wins and the Portuguese league has now overtaken the era of the busy and it's now the sixth best league in Europe so obviously some of these teams are doing really well going up higher in the coefficient will only help us uh, in terms of everything so we've done really really well got to the quarterfinals again of the Europa League this time knocked out by a country a country a team from the same country as us we took on Vitoria they beat us 3-2 in the game bit of a heartbreak one this because I actually felt like they were a team that we could have beaten because we finished just above them in the league but we go out in the quarterfinal stage of the Europa League but money's money you have to take where you can get this cash at this stage we got to the semi-finals of the Portuguese Cup as well uh, where we were beaten by Benfica uh, no real surprise there and then the Allianz Cup, the second phase, we're just really struggling in that competition. We just can't seem to get going. But we finish in fifth. We qualify for the Europa League yet again. And we're only five points outside of that Champions League contention. Money is here. We've got four million to spend. We've got 462k in our wage budget. This is a long, long way, guys, since we had that 10k in that first season. We've got a big dent uh, uh, to spend. And I think I'm actually going to have to start buying players now, which is going to really stick with me but we'll see what happens for season number nine okay guys before we get into the transfer update for season number nine there are a couple of players that i do need to touch upon that have left the club they left in january at the end of the season and i didn't realize uh that i didn't update you on them last time out so goncalo borge he has gone uh to wolfsburg he went to wolfsburg in january for six million so again it's just some more good money coming into the club daniel perez Again, we signed him for free, sold him for 2.3 million uh, just a little bit after. He's gone back to Circle Bruges. He could not uh, settle in the area, so we sold him straight back out. But again, it's a nice quick way of making profit, guys. Get people in on freebies, sell them back. Even if it's a season later, it really, really does help. We've been out and we've strengthened again. Really, really strengthened. I've tried to find the right type of player to bring in here. I've still not spent any money. I've just moved it all into wages. But let's talk about some of the players that we brought in. Uroz comes in another serbian um uh, a, a good international actually four caps for serbia nice heading attribute as well really really nice player for this division making the step out of serbia to come and play here we've signed this guy as well another serbian but this one comes out of inter milan uh he uh Niki, Nik, nixa uh looks like a really good rotation option he comes in as a squad player definite improvement on the guy that we did send back to belgium uh then this is another guy that we have actually bought from belgium uh muasa is a fantastic player great this year if you're playing draft mode uh fantastically well-rounded left back he is very very good the fact that he's 32 years of age as well i think he's going to be really good for us in terms of being a leader being a player who's kind of been there and done it in his career um i'm hoping he can be fantastic for us moving forward um now we've also signed this guy, uh, Jeremy is how I'm going to say this dude's name. He comes in, uh, a Dutch player coming out of Ajax. He's actually played for Ajax as well in a couple of fixtures as well. Uh, coming in as our new right back. So we've really improved those fullback positions this time around. We've also signed another new gen. Traore comes in, this guy, former Real Madrid Castilla member. He comes in on a free transfer. Real Madrid looking like they let him go. He was on loan again in the division last year. Got an average rating of a 7 in 16 appearances. I like he like we like them coming in for free transfers florian flick comes in as well another bundesliga uh, player played at schalke for over 150 league appearances as well can play as a uh, central midfielder cdm and center back he is what is called a utility player ladies and gentlemen and then the last player is grahelme santos again a former sporting player we're picking up some of these
these players that are released by the bigger, bigger clubs in Portugal, taking the, their players in, their unwanted cast-offs, and seeing what we can do with them. In terms of the tactic, though, guys, this is how we are looking. This is our best 11. Now, we've got a couple of Serbians running in. Now, this is definitely not our best 11 uh, because this guy, I can assure you, will not be playing. But you can see some of the players in here. We've really improved in certain key areas for yet another big, big run. Um, Europa League, again, we will be trying to do our best in that competition. If we take a look at the Portuguese League and the season preview, it's 50 to 1. We're actually predicted to finish in sixth. Now, um, this team is effectively all Benfica bar two players who actually play for, uh, one plays for, uh, actually they both play for Porto. Two Porto players, nine Benfica players. Yikes. Uh, Benfica, is it their turn to win the league this year? Porto won it last year, so it's only fair, isn't it? And we're going to see what we can do in season number nine. I'm hoping, I'm hoping this year is the year that we crack it into that top four. Right, so top four status has been confirmed, but this year that hasn't meant that we've not qualified for the Champions League. We will be in the Europa League yet again, guys. Our points total was actually considerably worse than last season. 53 points for us, but we do finish in fourth. So again, it's another way of getting good money into the club. We, uh, we perform above that board expectation of finishing inside the top half. We finish in fourth, 53 points. It's actually a really poor season this year uh, in terms of the league performance. Benfica win the title, uh, which is very interesting to see. Uh, fair play to them. As I said, they do just keep love it, loving their alternating uh, between themselves and Porto. Um, not really improved as much as I would have liked. We have got some silverware, though. We did win the Portuguese Cup. We beat Benfica in that final three goals to one. Romero, uh, Velcus, and Muliatari getting the goals against Benfica, a stacked Benfica team. They did rotate looking at things by the looks of things. Their, their team's not as strong as it could have been, but we got the job done. We win our first piece of silverware, which is nine seasons in. It's probably a bright time that we won something in terms of a domestic honor. We got to the semi-finals of the Allianz Cup, our best performance so far, but we still couldn't win it. Um, beaten by a Chavez, a team that I'd actually never heard of, but I do like the look of that pink kit. I need to see what that looks like IRL, uh, but they finish inside third and qualify for the Champions League. Knocked out in the knockout playoff round by Stade Bressois, um or Brest uh, out of France, which is relatively disappointing in the Europa League, but um, maybe next year could be a big year for us. I'd like to think that we could start mounting a title challenge. In terms of the finances to do so, I don't actually have a lot of money here, but there, there is some interest in some of our players in our team. But Helme Santos is wanted, Flick's wanted. Uh, we've got some players that are already leaving on free transfers and stuff like that. So let's go out for this 10th and final season and see what we can make happen in this transfer market. I have a feeling, guys, we're going to be bringing in some new gems. Right, everyone, this is a big 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 transfer window i actually think this is the best transfer window i've had not only because i've actually bought some players but just some of the business that we've done has enabled me to really really strengthen this team for the 10th and final season um that is largely down to the fact that this man matteo soroni has departed the club he has actually gone to rb salzburg um, after a, a, an interesting spell with us for two seasons. It's actually done pretty well in both these seasons. Uh, but 13.5 million was the departing, uh, departing transfer fee. 13.5 million. I just couldn't turn it down. It allowed me to do so, so much with this team. In terms of some of the players that we have brought in, Josip Mikuel Vasquez comes in. A new gen to play at uh, right back. He's got 17 for long throws. Yes, we're going to use that. Yes, we are Rory Delap. We're going to go for it. He came in on a free transfer. We bought this guy, Jao Pereira. We've got ourselves a new gen goalkeeper, guys. He's 23 years of age. He's six foot three uh, and looks like a very good player. We actually paid 750k for him. Um, and I'm really buzzing that he's actually come in. He's actually just had four years consistently in the Portuguese top flight. So now he's ready to take his, uh, take his talents to us and uh, hopefully have another good year. Miguel Rodriguez comes in to play in any of the three key positions for me up top. He is another free transfer coming out of Sevilla. Uh, again, free transfer, not really played for Sevilla over the last couple of seasons. Uh, then we have this guy, um, Mukhtar. He comes in, a new gen goalkeeper. He's just a backup, guys. Don't you worry about him. Was spawned actually at Bayern Munich. Uh, looks like a good, good, good backup goalkeeper. I'm happy with the business that we've done. 
Now we talk about players. This is my main man that I'm really, really happy with. We needed a striker, I felt like. Uh, and this is the man. Suleiman Silima. He comes in. 23 years of age. Uh, 29 youth caps for the Netherlands. But he's not broken into that Netherlands first team just yet. Coming out of Sparta. Rotterdam. He has 19 determination. He has really nice physicals as well. He is a determined personality. And he's got 16 for dribbling, finishing, and first touch. He's got 15 off the ball, 15 technique. Nice high work rate. We paid a lot of money for this guy. 10.5 million pounds um, is the total cost. We didn't really pay a load of that up front. Uh, but 10.5 million quid for hopefully the striker that really tips us over the edge. Obviously, we needed to update uh, that spot that Matteo Sarone actually was part of. This is the man to do that. Mikel Valentin, he comes in. Uh, from Copenhagen, obviously a Danish international. You can sort of see the caliber of players that we're actually being able to attract at the club now. He's on a £40,000 a week or £40,000 £40, a week contract. Um, he's really good. High stamina, high strength, high natural fitness. Again, to go in that midfield spot, you can play as a natural, as a central midfielder and as a DM. And then the final player that we've got, Omar Eskeb Sanchez. Again, another high mentality uh, player Paraguayan youth international to come in into this central midfield spot another body in here he actually didn't really cost us too too much at all 250k in compensation uh, we've had a lot of players go out on uh, loans and free transfers and stuff like that but this right here right now is going to be the best 11 going into season number 10 of this rebuild obviously the goalkeeper Jean Pereira coming in as a really good player here Valentin coming in as well alongside Andre Almeida uh Silima up top Berkic is a very good player for us now 16 finishing on him the young Serbian and his physicals look really really good um he's going to be wanted uh, in not too much time at all but we've got a lot of depth here I'm really happy with this for the 10th and final season obviously because we did win the Portuguese Cup we've got the Portuguese Portuguese Super Cup uh, coming up as well as an additional competition as well as the Europa League. If we go into the league preview, the season preview says fifth, 25 to 1. This is our best chance at doing anything in terms of winning the league and breaking that Benfica and Porto stranglehold that they do have on the division. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath, but we are going to try our best. We are up into fifth in terms of the Portuguese league, in terms of that coefficient. Bundesliga, we're chasing you down, but we have overtaken League 1 uh, in uh, in these um, uh, the co a competition reputation. And I think this is our year to do something. We've already got our first piece of silverware. Let's see what we can do in season number 10. Okay, guys, so I'm going to talk about the league first, and it was a rather dis uh, disappointing season in terms of the league. We finished in fifth. We did finish in fifth. 62 points, not our best points return. Benfica actually do win back-to-back -back trophies. They've actually started to stamp their authority on this here. Uh, Benfica do win the title. Portugal, Porto, Sporting, Chavez, round off the top four who qualify for the Champions League. But if you've noticed this, qualified for the Champions League, not through the league. It's not through the league. If we go on to our competitions tab, ladies and gentlemen, this was so close to being a ludicrous season. We got into the final of all the cup competitions that we were in, which is probably why our league performance took a bit of a hit. Um, if we take a look at some of the competitions, obviously the Portuguese Super Cup right at the start of the season, the curtain opener, we lost that final three goals to two to Benfica, but obviously the difference between ourselves and Benfica is quite large still. Even to this day, it is still quite big. The Allianz Cup, the cup that we've been so bad in, we've managed to scoop it in our final season. We won that final 1-0. We beat Porto in that final. I'm trying to click on it, but it's not allowing me to open it. But we beat Porto in that final. The Portuguese Cup. We could not, unfortunately, get our hands on that for the second time in this save. Uh, Porto beat us in that final uh, rather disappointingly. Uh, we were a goal down. Then we had Vasquez sent off. And then he scored in the 91st minute as we were obviously pushing to get something out of the game. But obviously, uh, getting to the finals of these competitions is very impressive. Not as impressive as getting to the final of the Europa League and winning it. We got to the final. I will talk about the run in a minute. But Miguel Rodriguez, this man, the man from Sevilla, turned up in that final. Turned up big time. Got a hat-trick for us. 
as well as Burkic. Um, we are absolutely flying, which means we will be play we would be playing Champions League football in season number 10. We get our hands on the Europa League, um, obviously, again, following in the footsteps of Newcastle. So it seems like Newcastle need to win the trophy first, and then we win it the season after, which I'm actually kind of okay with, although I'd rather Newcastle didn't win trophies because of their owners. Ultimately, this has been a ludicrous season, an absolutely ludicrous season. If we go onto my profile and we take a look at my job history, you can see the progress that we've made over the course of the 10 years at Belenezes. Obviously, we won the title in our first season and got promoted. We won the league, uh, the second tier in our first season as well. And then look at the progression. We've kind of been relatively consistent over the course of things, barring this 10th place finish here. Uh, after 14th in that first season, 6th, 5th, 10th, 6th, 5th, 4th, 5th. Uh, but we've picked up some trophies along the way. Obviously, we did pick up that Europa Conference League. We did pick up a Portuguese Cup. We picked up a Portuguese. I think the Allianz Cup is like a League Cup, potentially. I don't actually know for certain. And the Europa League. The team is definitely in a much better position much much better spot than when we took over we are absolutely flying at the top of the league 600k in terms of that wage budget if you did want to take things over um and then uh other than that i think we've been absolutely fantastic we've got a lot of players on the outgoings here but obviously we're trying to keep up with things there are some players that i did want to touch on that we have sold i just wanted to show you where they were now uh, Jose Baptista, obviously this player came through our youth academy. He has gone via the way of PSG and he is now at Bayern Munich, age 24. Looks very good, looks very good as a defense midfielder. If we go into his history, we sold him for 15 million. Uh, El Nasser sold him for 10 to PSG and then they've sold him on two seasons later to Bayern Munich for 34 0.5 million pounds so some good money coming out of our youth academy despite the fact that we didn't see all of it uh and then where is the other one i can't find Haller. i can't even remember what season i sold him in now it's in Haller. there he is he's at severe ladies and gentlemen uh he's bounced around as well he still looks like a very good footballer as well 25 years of age he's now been capped by port uh portugal in the national team format we sold him for 7.75 then they sold him to levante then he's been sold on to severe so some very interesting progress in here with these uh, with these players and ultimately this is a fantastic last season for us if you did want to pick up this save guys you can do i will post this probably the day after uh, uh posting this video live it will be in my discord you can pick up the save and carry things on with belenezes and hopefully one day someone will win that portuguese league title with this team i'd really love to see it if you do like the rebuild content though guys there is an entire playlist on the channel is going to pop up right here if you want to see all the teams that we've rebuilt in FM23 so far.